Well, well, well. Okay, today is what? Uh, it's a, I think it's the 7th of December. And um, I want to make a little video here. I'm going to go down Taggart. Uh, Taggart Road. You know, that's where the... Uh, that's off of where the um, deal was there with uh, what happened with the uh, derailment and the, all, all the drama. So I'm going to go ahead and go around. And uh, it's probably not a great idea what I'm doing because in truth, uh, I don't know. I probably shouldn't uh, do it this way, but I'm going to. I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to. I mean, that's the greatest idea. We'll see how it turns out. I don't know. We'll do what we can. Whew. So, I'm coming from right now, like, uh, inside of East Palestine. I haven't gone completely downtown, but pretty close. So, I'm going back out. I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it recording, and I'll tell you why. Because I don't want to have to be fiddling around with the telephone, telephone video capturing device. It's pretty amazing, huh? So, here we go. Leaving out of East Palestine, heading towards Route 51, which is, you know, in Pennsylvania. So we're actually heading right now, sort of like northeast. That kind of a move, northeast of East Palestine. I have to say, I love this little town. I really do. I just, I, I really, you know, it's it's my favorite area as far as a rural area in this area people have always been very friendly and just a really nice community that's I, I really I, I mean that wow some great people that's my experience see that's why you know when after the derailment you know and i i don't want to i don't want to take a whole lot of time with this but you know i would have been right there at the site of that derailment that night at that time because that's where i was heading to right there to leaky leaky more than likely well let me take that back i might have drove past leaky but i would have been right there at the time of the derailment i mean the timing almost uh, I mean right on there right right at that time I can't you know I, I don't know from what I've heard the reports at the time of the derailment it was pretty pretty frightening for folks that lived close by the tracks there so you know I saw what I saw for you know the next day and then Sunday is this smoke that was coming from you know I, I, what, what I could see from you know, down towards Chippewa, and it and it really struck me. You know, I knew that I knew that things were still burning, and a thought entered my mind in Jesus' name. You know, that it was being intentionally burned off. You know, but that kind of a thought—that's a pretty evil kind of like thought, and it, and it just didn't happen. You know, um, I was quickened about it to come up and capture some video. And I did. I captured video from this road right here. We're gonna make. We're gonna make a right onto and head south on, which is uh, actually it's Route 51. And uh, but we're in Ohio right now because we headed northeast, coming out of East Palestine, East Palestine. So now we're heading south. Anyway, there's a railroad bridge down here, and it's the railroad bridge, the line that you know the train Norfolk Southern derailed on. And I got up there Sunday afternoon, which was the 5th, and I got captured video. And another news station was there. I believe it was Channel 2. Now, I paid them the courtesy. I didn't record them. And, you know, I'd asked them. I had a camera that had a good zoom on it. And I was like, you know, 
you know, it's an amateur camera, but it got a good zoom. It's a hobbyist camera, but it, you know, I, I said, look, I can capture this video and help you guys out unless you don't have a zoom. And then, I, you know, I went down on the tracks after capturing some, you know, uh, capturing what I did up on the uh, bridge. And when I looked up, they were gone. So it was really weird. But, you know, I, I, I didn't put it together then that the media wasn't reporting on things. You know, that they were, they were being actually guided not how to, how to report on things. And that look from Pennsylvania to see, you know, those tankers, those hazardous material containers on fire from the Pennsylvania side over here, that would have shook up the narrative, you know, because Pennsylvania wasn't mentioned by anybody. You know, it was really all about positioning everything in East Palestine. So, after I captured the video, you know, I just thought, you know what, man? These poor bastards over here, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying that's how I, I'm just trying to give it to you this way. It's like, those poor bastards, you know, look at this, these people, you know, they're, they're, they're all this shit, what's in that? What are they burning? You know, so I'm like, you know what? Maybe if I get, maybe I can get some attention to this, they'll stop this. Maybe they'll determine to clean it up the right way and not intentionally burn the shit off and contaminate all these people around here with what the hell was in those containers. And I knew it. Nobody had to say anything. I just knew. I knew. Now, what I'm saying is I had heard that there was something, you know, that there, there were some containers that were, but... Look, look the AP, let me, let me just uh, interject this. The AP reported the day before I captured that video off of this road right here that... There were 14 tankers of vinyl chloride that were involved, and that they, they report, and Norfolk Southern told the Associated Press that there were, at, they said there were 20 containers that were classified as carrying hazardous materials. So, they were coming up on this bridge, or did we already go by it? I'm sorry, I lost one. Yeah, it's coming up here. You see up on this hill, up on this. So anyway, you know, I thought I was doing every. I wanted to help. And there was my naivete. I sent the footage out to the networks. You know, out to all of the networks. And it just so happened that, you know, within a couple hours of me doing that, within a couple hours of me sending out all that video to all these different networks, you know, the ABC networks, which now I refer to my, would say they're the corporate media, corporately owned and directed, you know, they, they, follow, they, they follow directives of corporations, and, um, you know, that, you know, probably you're thinking, oh my god, he's a conspiracy theorist, because that's the way that we're, our mind is trained up now, so anyway, I, I, uh, I sent that out to the media, a whole lot of media, and, um, within two hours, Governor DeWine, he declared a state of emergency, and activated our military, you know, which was the uh, Army National Guard stationed, you know, Ohio, Ohio, but they're Army, they're all Army, believe it, they're all, you know, under federal jurisdiction, they are, they, you think, you know, it's not state, it's, yeah, they will, but they're used by the states, but anyway, so they used our military abused our military by having them stand sentry sentry s-e-n-t-r-y sentry to you know um, guard everything so nobody would capture a video like I did off of uh, Route 51 they closed everything down so nobody could get anywhere near the site of the derailment now why would they do that well the reason why they did it is because they said that they couldn't get near this one tanker that they, this is what this is how they did it. They they told our authorities and everyone. They scared the shit out of everybody. Used the media to to do this as well. They said, you know what? There's this tanker, and we got to release the pressure off of it because it's going to blow up, and there's going to be shrapnel that's going to be shot out a mile out from the explosion, and there's going to be all this all of this toxic smoke that's going to go up from the explosion. So they went ahead and went ahead and manipulated their way into this thing. How they did that. You know, so that then they 
uh, blocked the area off so nobody could, would take video or photos of them preparing that area for a massive disposal, dispersal disposal of everything. And I mean everything. If you look at the, if you look at the aerials from the uh, drones that went over the derailment, tell me you don't count at least 30 containers that are burnt, charred, you know, after they did all that. What I'm saying is, you know, I, I would, I would uh, guess that there were at least 30, there were 30 containers of hazardous materials. How are you going to say that something is not hazardous anyway? You know, I mean, it might not be as bad as vinyl chloride, but what kind of materials were in those ones that weren't classified as as hazardous materials as well. So I don't know how many they burn off, but they burnt everything off. Now what I wanted to show you is, see here, welcome to Ohio. Now I'm gonna show you on the way back out what I'm, okay, we're, we just entered into Ohio right now, folks, right here. And I will show you, here's Leaky, and right, right there is Leaky, look. You see that right there, the sign? And right behind there is the derailment area. Right to the right here is the derailment, and that's how close it is to the border. That's the border right there, Ohio border in Pennsylvania. Right there, you saw it. How far was it? I said it was a stone throw. I wasn't exaggerating. It's a literal stone throw. So here, I want to show you the sign, the sign for East Palestine. I'm going to drive good and slow. I want you to see the sign. Now entering. Welcome. Welcome to historic East Palestine, Ohio, where you want to be. Right there. Did you see it? Okay. When I sit on the outskirts of East Palestine, I was not exaggerating. I haven't exaggerated anything. I have not exaggerated a thing. Matter of fact, when I, when I, when I made any statements early on, you know, to try to bring light to this, I was low-balling it because that's how they were positioned it. You know, they didn't say there were, tell the truth about their, you know, the were, I mean, the Associated Press reported on 14 vinyl chloride containers, but, you know, th that was it. Then, then it just went mute after that, you know, so the major corporate media, ABC, NBC, I, I, you know, the alphabets, I don't know how many of them are completely, you know, in step, you know, in line with uh, these corporations. I can't say if they all are. All I know is that that went th that night that they burnt everything off that they uh, in an uncontrolled manner because the thing is you know to get rid of to dispose of hazardous materials like vinyl chloride and such you have to use a process i forget the name of the of the type of incinerator that they use but we're talking about a uh, an incinerator where they can control everything with the incineration i don't know how else to put this i'm, not, I'm just trying i'm letting you know i mean and that's how they nullify a lot of hazardous materials they can't you can't do it by just burning you know something think about tires and the disaster that even is with burning tires so i mean that makes sense doesn't it what i'm saying but we're talking about chemicals we don't, they never even gave us a whole list of what it was but what i wanted to say is that you know i came out of the house in Jesus' name yeshua of nazareth risen exalted glorified see we're going past it now again here just want to show you and um i went outside there and it, it had it had been about an hour you know it, even even a little over an hour since the you know that, that they had gone ahead and and lit this thing on fire over here and uh you know the sky there wasn't i, I had looked at the forecast there wasn't a cloud in the sky everything that we saw then was you know the fallout those clouds were all the all of what they were burning off disposing of so you see pennsylvania border sign right there but i mean it's funny the, the ohio border sign is way closer so i don't understand which one it is is it in between but e either way man you got a good arm you can throw right there where the derailment and you see i wanted to tell you that uh when i say the outskirts of East Palestine, I never exaggerated, and I said on the border of Pennsylvania. When I said the winds, you can check this out, radar, satellite imagery, you're not going to see any winds go to the west behind me, to the back of me, into East Palestine. It just didn't happen. You know, they, everything went to the east, the southeast, and the, and the northeast, like in that is what it did. And you can see all of that, there's a record of all these things, and you know, there's a record. So there I am, I'm capturing the video in uh, Darlington Township, you know, that's there in Darlington, which is, by the way, a crow flies, maybe five miles from where they, five miles 
I don't want to, you know, I don't want to low ball it. Is it six miles? Is it seven miles? I don't know. It's, it's whatever it is. You know, it's a, it's a few miles. Now, the winds were only moving at two miles per hour, so that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? That it took over an hour for it to get over there to Darlington, where I live. When I came out there, the clouds were just thick, and I started recording. And, you know, I was incensed in Jesus' name because... In Jesus' name, yeah, of God Almighty, I was quickened, and I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna uh, play, you know, games about it. I was quickened. I was quickened. If you listen to what I said, then you'll know that I was quickened. In Jesus' name, I was quickened. Hallelujah. I knew, I knew that they had done that intentionally, and you can imagine how I felt that they did that, and it was, and it was possible that the reason they did that, the impetus was the footage I sent out. So now maybe you understand a little bit more about where I'm at with this thing, okay? So for me, it wasn't just a ha just a happenstance. You know, when I saw that they activated our National Guard, declared a state of emergency within a couple hours of me sending out that footage to the networks, I knew then. But I still, it's still, it's something so evil and so ugly. God didn't create us to deal with this kind of insidious, this kind of evil, you know. We're not created, we're created to be holy unto God, you know. Whether you believe it or not, that's a reality. We're not, we weren't created to, to see things like we're seeing today. So, you know, I'm sitting there and recording the video at the, off of this road right here, Route 51, just south of here. We're going the out, right outside of Darlington where I live. And, uh, whoa. So right there beside me where I'm capturing it all is uh, WTAE, Channel 4 Action News. And they're sitting there. And I was being respectful to them. I never, you know, consciously had that knowing. You know, I couldn't register the thought that they weren't going to air the footage, that they weren't going to warn people for, from this fucking fallout. Excuse me. Please understand. These words are appropriate. If I use a word like that, don't turn off, man. You know, hear what I'm saying to you. You know, there were literally, literally, how many people live in Beaver County? How many people live in Lawrence County? How far did it go? How many thousands of people were dosed, contaminated? God only knows. And that's, that's, that's true. Okay? That's true. So if I use an expletive, come on, man, cut me a break here. What do you want me to say? Something, I, what? Affected? I'm just telling it like it is. I'm going to keep it real. And it's appropriate. So they never aired any of the footage. And uh, it didn't sink in. You know, do you realize it took days for me to realize that? It's so evil. Hear what I'm telling you. It's such an evil thing to do to keep people from knowing that they were being contaminated. It's so evil that I couldn't even realize it. It took me days and I captured them on video. That's how evil it is. And I, I understand why it's so difficult for me to communicate this message even if I have them on video. Because nobody wants to hear it. My God, what am I saying? What am I saying? Yes, what I've said is what I've said. It's true. Nobody was given an opportunity to even shelter in place, to tape up their windows, to go to do whatever they need to do. Put on chemical masks. Something. Now think about it. We think about a corporation as being some giant that's untouchable, but there are people that made these decisions. There are people that are accountable. That's the truth. That's the truth. Here we are December 7th. December 7th. It's been... You know what? We're just two, two months shy of the derailment of all this happening. It took them a month to declare 
Beaver and Lawrence County is part of the disaster with East Palestine. And you know, the truth is, why they did it is that they didn't want to say anything so that whatever what was that was there, the particles, all the contamination, would either have some of it breaks down, a lot of it, you know, when it, when it then rained, it did rain after a couple weeks, we got some good rain, and that stuff then washed into, the, went into the soil, washed down the streams into the river, but they were waiting for that, man, it's like, woo, and they know all along, they positioned the whole thing in East Palestine, the winds never even went in East Palestine, what you have there is really, unfortunately, you know, the fire departments, the first responders, when they got there, inadvertently, man, they used all that water on that uh, area, and a lot of that chemical got washed into the stream. You know, that wasn't really, I, I doubt, seriously, it even had much to do at all with the controlled burn, you know, uh, dispersal disposal, because the trench they dug, I'll bet you that they took precaution that they would, that that wasn't going to happen, that it was going to leak into the soil. They did something. You know, we're talking about packing the ground, running it over. Of course, you know, we don't have any video or, or, or photographs that we've seen of any of that preparation because that is so damning. Just like the video that I captured and released is so damning. It's so damning. But, hey guys, that's just the way it is. I would move the camera around. I don't want to mess around with it. But, you know, uh, I'll tell you about these containers that Norfolk Southern's got and I can see all the way driving into Darlington where I live I thought they'd moved them out you know and they did move them out for a little bit and they moved them all back in and I don't know if they're sitting over here full of pellets from the cracker plant or what the hell is in them but these uh these big you know this corporation these corporations this is how what they do man they just abuse that public trust and they'll park they'll park these uh, containers if you look to your right, you might see them, but I'm not going to move the camera around. I'll drive up, and I'll tell you what, they go a good couple miles out. They're all together. We don't know what's in the containers, but they parked them here. Now, I, um, I, I, look, uh, I complained about it, you know, and didn't go, didn't get nowhere with it. I don't want these people getting all freaked out, you know, they're like, what the hell is this guy doing driving back in here? Hopefully I can make it out of here without getting their attention. But these, these containers here, they're going to go, I'll show you, they'll go all the way into town. And I thought, man, you know, I, 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 I bitched about it because I'm like, well, you know, there are people that literally live up right up against these things and, and uh, you know, what's in them? So, you know, I, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to show you where there's a, a, a swing set over here. You know, and, and this is sir, probably if I take, if I would take the time, I could show you several you know, people, I, I'm telling you, this is close. It's close to everyone here, everyone that lives around here. They're right up against the houses. I'm going to drive through here just so that you see, just so you don't think that, oh, I'm just, you know, exaggerating. I ain't exaggerating shit, man. I'm telling the truth. You know, so the situation here, you know, there's a house right there. Wait a minute. Oh, can you see the house? Damn it. Well, if you can't, you can. So let me turn, turn the truck. No, it's like this the whole way. I mean, so I get anybody's attention here, they're going to, somebody will get fucking irritated with me. But, um, you need to try to help people and they don't, I, I mean, it's just the way it is. I don't understand. I, I dealt with this when I was a kid. You know, there was a, a coal company that uh, talked, you know, our neighbors into selling their property so that they could, uh, you know, make a lot of money off of uh, the coal company harvesting, they gave them whatever the hell they gave them. But um, they had a, there was a stripper cut then up behind, you know, our farm. And that was heartbreaking enough. But one night there, there were all these covered dump trucks that came in. To, uh, you know, this is, this is a Shenango Township between Elwood City and, and Newcastle. But it's kind of country right there in Shenango Township. And so I... Uh, I saw all these line, dump trucks lined up, and they were covered, and they're going into a stri into a stripper cut. And I'm thinking, what the hell is a bunch of d d 50 dump trucks anyway? Anyway, and I'm, that's not exaggerating. That's being totally honest. So I'm like, what the hell? I called the police, and uh, it's kind of a ballsy thing for a kid kid to do. You know, I mean, maybe 
a little bit of impetuousness, you know? Could have got myself in big trouble. I don't know. But the police came out, went up there, and they were up there, you know, the stripper cut. And we're waiting because my family got up, you know. It was maybe about 2, 3 o'clock, I think, 3 o'clock in the morning. And the cop comes down to our house because that's where the call was from, you know. Got landlines then, there's no cell phones and shit. So he's like, ah, oh, everything's okay. I'm like, well, what is it? Ah, oh, it's all right. It's all right. They're mixing some good coal with the bad coal so they can get a better price for it. Mixing some good coal with some bad coal. Mixing some good coal with some bad coal. Well, my sister and my mom, they lost their teeth not too long after that because our spring you know, it was right underneath whatever the hell that it was that they put into that stripper cut. And their teeth all fell out. Everything, man. They all rotted out. It was something that was in the water because we're talking about, you know, the um, that aquifer. They had they'd already dug down deep into the aquifer, so it was already, you know, a lot closer, you know, to where the underground lake was behind, you know, our uh, spring house and watering trough. So, you know, we were getting the water from so, I mean, I, I was away, you know, I was in the military, I had moved away, and um, in that period of time, my mother and my sister's teeth all fell out, and it was really weird, really strange how that happened. Um, I put it together pretty quick, but, uh, you know, I, what I wanted to say is my neighbor down the street, my cousin, oh my God, he hated me for calling the, calling the authorities, you know, out that night, my goodness, I was... Why the fuck did you do that? You know, I just heard it. And, boy, he wanted to fight. You know, Eddie wanted to fight me over that, man. So, people get funny about this shit. Nobody in this town... I didn't even hear anybody complain about everything that happened with the fallout. I hear about it later. There's some activists, you know, that... Uh, you know, you see... Okay, okay, what the f hell? Okay, do you see? Okay, I'm gonna, let me back up again here. Okay, the train. Let me see how long... It's all the way out, you know, at least uh, a couple of miles out of town. But, uh... And you're probably wondering why, you know, do you, why they store them like this. Do you, do you want to know why? Are you curious? See, I wasn't exaggerating. Was I, was I exaggerating? Okay, all right, there are the kids playing, and there it is. And if you look, you see that. You can't see it on this side so much, but if you look closer, you can zoom in. That grass right there beside the, beside there, I'm going to get out, and I'm going to show you. You got to see this. I'm gonna, I don't want to block this. Let me get out, and I'll show you. I'll show you. The grass. The grass underneath the train and the grass, uh, the grass that runs, you know, the, what you think about is grass, you know, where there should be grass. Now, I want you to, I want to show you. I, I don't think they come, I don't think there's anyone coming over here and spraying this, man. I think whatever is in these containers right here doesn't allow anything to too much grow along the, along the train. Do you see this? Okay. All right. Let's say I'm wrong. Let's say that it is a chemical that's, that's used, okay? Maybe maybe it is a chemical. Well, what the hell kind of chemical next to these houses then anyway? So it's either one or the other. It's either the chemicals that they're using, some Roundup High industrial shit that probably is only used outside of towns. It shouldn't even be any, I'm telling you, they do some testing. Whatever the hell it is they use to kill these weeds, or if it is actually what's being hauled that's in these containers that does this, we don't know. These people, man, I don't care. They, they can get a case of the ass, whatever. You know, I'm trying to help them. They don't know. They don't know that, but... You see, I mean, nothing grows under it. Nothing grows beside it. So, you can see over there where there's nothing. That try, you know, there you see everything's growing. Grass on the tracks and around the tracks. And over here, there's nothing. I want you to see this again. So either whatever, and this is all the way, you know, so right up against people's houses and big difference over there though, isn't it, right? Anyway, 